What's up my comic comrades? Today we're breaking down the origin of Death Dealer, an antagonist who's making his MCU debut in Shang-Chi and The Legend of the Ten Rings. He's a very obscure character who's only appeared in four issues. In fact, because of that, I didn't even know who the dude was until the Shang-Chi trailer came out. At which point I researched and then read the four issues he was in. Honestly, it's a great example that you could have been reading comic books nearly your entire life like I have and still come across characters you never heard of. It's a great testament to how vast and rich the Marvel and DC universes are, where you could still come across characters you never heard of even after reading their books for decades. It's pretty cool actually. In any case, I am now a death dealer expert because I just read the four issues he's appeared in. With that said, he first appeared in Master of Kung Fu issue 115 in August of 1982, and he died three issues later in Master of Kung Fu issue 118. He was created by Doug Munch and Gene Day. With that said, let's get into it and see what this character is all about. His real name is Lee Ching Lin. We learned that Lin was an agent working for MI6, and he was also secretly working for Fu Manchu, who was going under the alias of Wang Yu Sang. What I'm saying is, he's a double agent. Anyway, Lin was considered extremely brutal and too dangerous by Fa Lo Sui, the director of MI6. Case in point, during sparring matches, he would choke his partners out with a rope around their neck. Because of this, Sui thought Lin was too dangerous and a liability, so she hired Dennis Nalen Smith and Shang-Chi to get rid of him, if you know what I mean. So Shang-Chi made his way to Lin's apartment, knocking on the door saying, Li Ching Lin, you must agree to come with me. Lin answers without explanation, and if I refuse, Chi responds, I will see that you cannot. This leads to a brief physical altercation between the two of them, with Chi ultimately getting the upper hand but Lin is able to grab Chi at the last minute and throw him into a wall and escape down the stairs into an alley. We later see Lin go to a warehouse where he meets Wang Yu Sang. Lin tells him he is all you said he was and more. Sang AK Fu Manchu replies, you speak of Shang-Chi? Lin answers, yes, he attacked me in my very house. Sang tells him, good, they are playing right into my hands as expected. Soon we will have the entire MI6 organization, past and present. From Fa Lo Sui right down to Shang-Chi. Here, Li Ching Lin, the time has come to remove your mask. By donning a new mask, you must now become Death Dealer. I want blood Death Dealer, and the first blood must be the blood of Shang-Chi, as he gives him a new mask and persona. Lin, now Death Dealer, puts on a costume and sets out to take down Shang-Chi and friends. And his first course of action is to get in a car and travel to an apartment where they're hanging out where he shoots a grenade through the window of said apartment. At first he thinks he's successful, but he soon finds out he wasn't. They're all still alive hiding in the rubble. So Death Dealer tries to sneak attack Shang-Chi from behind, but it doesn't work. He literally senses him and throws him over his head. This leads to an epic fight between the two of them. Then off in the distance, Clive Rustin shoots Death Dealer's hand, disarming him. So he fled by jumping out the window and into the river below. Though this was their first confrontation, it wouldn't be their last. Their next confrontation would happen in Master of Kung Fu issue 116. Now by this point, Shang-Chi realized that his father, Fu Manchu, was behind Death Dealer. So he decided to go to London searching for his father. But on the search for his father, he came into conflict with Death Dealer once again, who unleashed a gigantic scorpion on him created by Fu Manchu. Once poisoned by the scorpion, Death Dealer helped bring Shang-Chi back to a laboratory where of course he was tied up and tortured, but this is Shang-Chi, master of Kung Fu, so eventually he was able to escape. It's at this point Death Dealer goes after Shang-Chi, but even in Shang-Chi's weakened state, he is able to overcome Death Dealer in an epic three-page fight sequence. Death Dealer then fled with Fu Manchu via a helicopter saying they were going back to China. This brings us all the way to Death Dealer's last appearance in Master of Kung Fu issue 118. Now back in China, Fu Manchu and Death Dealer reside in Fu Manchu's castle, but come Come on, you think Shang-Chi wasn't going to follow them and bring them to justice? Of course he did, and when he arrived, Death Dealer came out to confront him yet again, hoping that the third time would be the charm. And this time, Death Dealer surprises Chi from behind, slashing his back with a blade. But this fight was even shorter than the previous ones because seconds later, Shang-Chi grabs a brazier, which is essentially a ball of fire, and throws it at Death Dealer, setting him on fire. With the captions of Shang-Chi saying, the costume ignites swiftly, his death mask burning away to reveal a living mask of sheer pain. He screams once, following it with a bubbling moan, then spasms in the whining flames. The sound is awful. I have completed the first of my deeds to be done in the darkness. I have dealt death to the Death Dealer. He who in recent past, has attempted to deal it to me. So only three issues after his first appearance, he was killed by Shang-Chi, who set him on fire, giving us the rise and fall of Death Dealer. So again, there's not a whole lot to the character of Death Dealer. Essentially, he was just hired by Fu Manchu to kill his son, but was never able to. This brings us to powers and abilities. As we all know now, Death Dealer was essentially Fu Manchu's enforcer hired to take out his son Shang-Chi. Though short-lived, that was his purpose. With that said, not trying to make fun of the character, he was like Shang-Chi, just not as good. So he was an extremely skilled hand-to-hand -hand fighter, as well as being very skilled with all sorts of blades. But again, compared to Shang-Chi, he was always easily outmatched. In layman's terms, he's a really good fighter, but again, 
nowhere near Shang-Chi's level. So I'm very curious to see what the MCU's approach is gonna be with the character. I imagine they're gonna change him quite a bit, but I'm not gonna be shocked if he doesn't make it to the end of the film because one, almost all MCU villains die by the end, and two, the character was short-lived in the comics, so it would make sense. Either way from the trailers, it looks like he's gonna be awesome in the fight scenes. As for reading recommendations, check out Master of Kung Fu issues 115 through 118. And that's gonna bring today's episode of Variant to a close, but if you like today's Shang-Chi's episode, be sure to check out this one right here. And if you like all of our videos, be sure to subscribe, like, and comment. It always helps the channel out. But other than that, I'll see you guys next time when I talk about all things comics.